Okay, so just want to welcome everybody that's going to be watching this on YouTube. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you're wondering why I have a heavy jacket on, well, the reason is because our heat is not working very well. So anyway, I'm freezing. But uh, anyway, just want to welcome you to the, to the message today. Actually, Dad is going to be speaking here in a minute. But uh, I just want to share just a few uh, quick words with us before he comes up is... Uh, just, I'm going to make some comments. I really, you know, after last week, the event, the time we had last week, I think all of us are like, can we go back to 2020? Um, but I, I'm going to be making some, some comments about where we are and where things stand and, and things like that. But I really wanted to have some time to wait on the Lord and get his mind about what is going on. Uh, my philosophy is when you're in the heat of battle, which we have been in the heat of battle for the past, I guess, since the election, November 3rd, and I guess we're now in January, so what's that, two months? When you're in the heat of battle and in the fog of war, is that's not really the time to try to find the messy middle or balance, because it's time to fight when you're in that time of war, and then afterwards you can reevaluate and, and make corrections where needed, and just really, just, okay, what can we learn from the, what we've just been through? And so I'm going to make some comments and evaluate different things of, you know, what we've been through, where we're at, how we got here, where things are going to go from here. You know, even, even I mentioned in one of my sermons, uh, I don't know, a month ago, is that, you know, we also need to look at what about all the prophecies that were given that Trump would be reelected and, I mean, barring an absolute miracle, <laughs> I just can't see that happening. That doesn't look like that's going to happen. Well, how do we handle that and things like that? So... Those are all very important conversations that we have to have. And I think this is an incredible learning experience is we can learn a tremendous amount from what we've just been through. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to be handling all that stuff. Some's going to be shared on Sunday mornings. Some are going to be shared on uh, audios. Some are going to be shared in articles. But anyway, I just wanted to get, I just wanted to have time to really wait on the Lord and get the mind of the Lord. I, I think giving a quick answer that's wrong is far worse than not giving an answer at all. There's, you know, the day of social media we live in, everyone's so quick to get out the latest, greatest thought of like, you know, this, this is what this, and, and so much of it is really doesn't have the mind of the Lord in it, in my opinion. And so I, I just believe it's very important to wait till you get your emotions in check. You can wait on the Lord. You can really get the mind of the Lord and uh, really just, just want to hear, okay, what is going on, Lord? What are you saying what are you speaking? And, and that's what I'm going to be doing. And even, even our leadership team, we're going to be really, really waiting on him just to, just to figure out, okay, where do we go from here? What has happened? What can we learn? Those kind of things. And so um, if you do follow us on YouTube, I want to encourage you. Some of the things I'm going to share, I'm not going to share on YouTube um, for obvious reasons because there has been an increase in censorship. So if you watch us on YouTube, I want to encourage you to join our email list. You can join at email.radicalpursuit.net. That's email.radicalpursuit.net. And so I want to encourage you to join our email list. I think, I think a lot of people are moving that way. Uh, censorship is going up and we've already begun to see it this week. And so, you know, it's going to be very important to stay connected is probably email is going to be one of the best ways to do that. So if you do subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure you join our email list because there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff we need to say, a lot of stuff that needs to be said, a lot of things we can learn. So anyway, with that said, I want to welcome uh, Pastor Ken Kessler. He's got the word of the Lord. I'm excited for what he's going to share. Give it up for Ken. Come on, give it up. <laughs> okay, we got we got the sister Donna. Let's see, how do we get this mic there, on, Brian? How do you get it on? You've got it on. Uh, I got it on, but I'm mean, I mean, turn it on. <laughs> All right, I'm on. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, I am ready. Yeah. Father, we do just thank you just for the fact that we're able to gather again and just thank yeah. you for your people, Father. And we just know that we're living in um, exciting days, the great and the terrible, Father. We're just seeing you do some 
awesome things and know that our times are in your hands. And Father, we thank you that you have called us to this season, to this time. And and Lord, even before we were born, you knew the hour that we would be in. And we just ask, oh God, even as we begin our time, that we that there'll be a real army. Your army will begin to arise, oh God. Yes, Father, yes. a fearless army would arise, oh God, that's empowered it by you, by none other than you, the mighty God. You are the mighty warrior. And Lord, we cry out, we say to we ourselves say, open the gates. We say, open up your gates so the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? He is strong and mighty in battle. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts and he is with us. And Lord, we thank you that you are a mighty warrior. We thank you that you were the one who is waging war in this hour. We thank you that we are on your side, Lord God. You say, choose you this day whom you will serve. If God be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. And God, we have already made our choice. And we thank you, God. We open up the gates of our our, our body, our heart, to you, the King of glory. And it's you that we want, we honor. It's you that we adore. It's you that we want to hear from, Lord. And we just thank you that you were doing something incredible in our day. We don't see it all, oh, but we know that you were doing something. And we thank you that you're building that inward kingdom in your people in this hour. And Lord, we thank you for the word today. And we cry out that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that you would unveil your son inwardly to us, Lord God, that you will cause the light of the knowledge of the glory of Christ to shine into our hearts. And Father, I thank you for the word that you have given to Ken, and we just cry out for you to take him out of the way that you would speak through him, not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, Lord. We pray that you, you will, uh, the word that you have given to him, to him will accomplish what you send it to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, I, I think Daniel handed out uh, yeah, put it I think Daniel handed out uh, the word that I'm going to be sharing from. Is that, or he's handing it out now. Daniel, make sure Donna gets one. She's uh, asked me to make sure she got one, so save one over there. Um, amen. Uh, wait just a minute or two before, for him to uh, get those handed out. Amen. Great worship uh, this morning as well. Thank you, worship team, for that. Bethany, you really, it was really powerful when you came forth with those, uh, was those, were those prophetic songs you were singing or did you have the words for, but they, they were really powerful. So anyway, rejoice in that. All right. Um, Brian asked me to share this uh, today. I had gotten a, a word the Lord had given me over the Christmas holidays, it was just, it wasn't like an encounter, but just in writing in my prayer journal, just different thoughts and uh, things that I was getting from about December 21st through about the 29th of December, and uh, really, the probably the most significant aspect of it actually came on Christmas morning. Uh, our Christmas was a little bit different this year. Um, we all, had, our whole family pretty much had COVID or a good bit of our family had COVID. And so we weren't, we didn't have any kind of family gatherings on, on Christmas. And uh, so it was a little bit different. So I had some good quiet time Christmas morning. Uh, and the Lord began, spoke probably the most significant part, the part that I'll kind of begin with here on that morning. But I really do sense it is a word of the Lord uh, for our church for sure, but uh, and for life school and, and the forerunner school, uh, but probably beyond that uh, as well. Uh, and so anyway, Brian asked me to share it, so that's what I want to do. And I'm, what I'm going to do, I've, I've handed out the word itself. We'll start by just reading through it, and then I'll stop periodically to kind of share what uh, the Lord may want me to expand upon. There'll be certain places where I expand upon it for a while, and then others that I don't uh, too much. So Anyway, let me just begin, um, and it's about the birth of the man-child. Um, 
I sense, and I'm just going to begin by just reading, I sense that the recent astronomical event in which Saturn and Jupiter together for, to, came together to form a sort of a Bethlehem star. Do you remember the, that, that uh, event that came? I think it was actually the 21st of December, where it was the closest they came together since, I think, 1226 or something there. And so, you know, roughly 800 years uh, since that uh, had happened. Uh, and, you know, we, we could see pictures of it. I looked at it in the sky. I couldn't see it, but uh, I think Michael said he saw it in his backyard and, uh, uh, and so others probably did. But it was a fairly significant uh, event even here uh, where, we, where we saw that uh, event. It appears in the, in the sky. Was a, and I believe what the Lord was saying, that that is a significant, or was a significant sign to the church. Uh, just like 2,000 years ago when the Bethlehem star uh, came and, in a sense, announced the birth of Christ, um, that now the, this particular sign was, is a sign to the church uh, that is announcing the time to birth the man-child of Revelation chapter 12, uh, which I am very excited about, that it's a time when this uh, when God is going to raise up the church, he's going to raise up the church in a very significant and in powerful way. And I'll talk some more about that in the message. But that, that was a signal saying this is the time uh, that he's going to do that in a much more general and widespread way. Now, I know we've been talking about the man child and we've been doing a lot as a church, especially well here locally, but also through life school and even more recently the forerunner school. Uh, but I really believe there's going to be a significant increase coming in the days ahead, the decade ahead of this birth and maturity of the man-child. And we'll talk in the message a little bit about what uh, this man-child is. But just like Christ was born to be the sacrificial lamb who gave his life for the salvation of the world, the man-child will lay down their lives to bring about the end of the age. That's the purpose of the man-child is to produce a, a church that will be mature, uh, that will be powerful, that will, that will be a true representation of Christ and be a force to be reckoned with uh, in the end times. And certainly there's a need for that. Uh, just as Christ signaled, just as Christ's birth signaled the birth of the church age, the man-child will bring about the end of the age. The man-child must be, and here, here's a, an assignment for us, really. The man-child must be explained to the church. It must be prepared. The man-child must be explained. It must be birthed. It must be prepared. And at some point, uh, and I'll deal with this in a minute, at some point will become a mighty force in the earth to be reckoned with. Now, the, the way the age is going to end, you know, if you look at some of the end time views, she said, like the church is just going to hide until the rapture takes place while the Antichrist rules the world. Well, that's not the way it's going to be. God is raising up his church in power. He's raising up his church in authority. He's raising up his church in a way that there will be a mighty confrontation uh, between the, the, the forces of, the, uh, of, of Christ through the church in, in contrast and in, in uh, against the, the spirit of Antichrist that's raising up in the earth. We will be a force uh, to be reckoned with. And that, is, that preparation is being signaled that it's time to begin in a very powerful way. Just like Brian said a few minutes ago, this is the church's finest hour. This is the church's finest hour. And God wants us to fully embrace, fully embrace this invitation from the Lord uh, to go all in on being a part of this man-child company that God is raising up in the earth. Um, let me finish reading this another sentence here or two. The prepared church is not to shrink back in fear, but to engage the forces of the Antichrist system. Uh, so I want to pause for reading the word here uh, and, and talk a little bit about the, the man-child and, and kind of the, get a, a little bit of an overview of that. I thought it was interesting uh, that I don't know how many of you have listened to Terry Bennett's uh, message from 
last Sunday, January the 3rd. Anybody? anybody? Uh, and it was interesting that his daughter, Shiloh, uh, had her baby on that day, actually January the 3rd. Uh, and he made his uh, statement in the, in the message that that was, because they named the, the baby Jehu, uh, and that that was a sign that God was birthing the man-child, Jehu, which would be, Jehu, as you know from Second Kings, was the one who uh, defeated, killed Je Jezebel, and also uh, killed the, the ten kings, or the ten sons of Ahab. Ahab had already actually been dead. Uh, and so it was that Jehu was, a, a, in what Terry was saying, that's a picture of Christ and the man-child in, in partnership at the end times and in that, in that end time thing. But the, what, the, what was significant to me, what I thought, okay, uh, it was confirmation. Terry confirmed my word, see, so I was excited about that. Uh, but others have said the same thing. But I think what the Lord is saying is that now is the time. Now is the time. And, you know, it's not just some date in the future. Now is the time that God wants to birth uh, that man child. So now let's look at let's look at uh, for a minute at Revelation uh, chapter twelve. Uh, most of you are familiar with this, but I just want to read it and talk a little bit about it. Uh, starting with verse one, and a great sign appeared in heaven: a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, uh, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. So there was a woman in heaven, and she was with child. And she cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. <clears throat> so she was in labor. She was, uh, she travailed or cried out. And then they talk about the dragon. But in verse 5, and the woman gave birth to a son. In the New American Standard, it says male child. But in the, New, in the King James, it says man child. Who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and to heaven. Uh, so there's a lot more to this, but I just want to put it in a very practical way. Is out of the, out of the, the womb of the church, out of the womb of the church must come this man-child, must come, must be birthed, this man-child must be birthed, uh, who, will, who will come forth as a mature man, you know, mature representation of Christ uh, in the earth and will will have an intimate relationship with the Lord but will also have authority, ru rule the nations with a rod of iron. Now part of that will be in the age to come but, but part of it is at the end of the age. And so if you begin to look at the traits of this, that this man-child will be intimate with Christ this man-child will take on the image of Christ in fullness, and this man-child will uh, be used of God in the last days in great authority in, com in confronting the, the forces of evil that are rising up uh, even in our day. Because if you look on in the chapter, you see that the, man, the birth of the man-child ends up casting down the dragon from the mid-heavens down to earth, which is, causes the rise of the Antichrist. And so there's going to be a real uh, authority uh, released upon uh, this man-child. Uh, and what the Lord is saying is that now is the time. Now, it's not going to be something that's going to be birthed in, uh, you know, a day or a month or a year even. It's going to be over a period of time for sure. But this is where, but this is started. This is, the, the Lord is saying this is, this is happening. Darkness is increasing. Confusion is increasing uh, in the earth. But God is raising up his people and his anointing in a very, very significant, in a very powerful way. So it's a time to be excited about it. You know, I mean, we can get, if you look at, if you read the news and you look at what all is happening uh, in the earth, you can get down, you can get, you can get depressed but if you look at what God's doing, you can get excited about it. And we need to be excited about not what's going on in the world, but what's going on in the heavenlies. And as he's birthing this.
this man child, and he's invited us. The good part about it, uh, one of the good parts about it, he has invited us to be uh, participators, not only in being part of the man child company, but to be forerunners who help birth this throughout the earth. What, a, what an invitation. What a powerful invitation the Lord has given to this little house uh, to do that. Uh, and we've already started. I mean, those of you that are part of the Forerunner School, I mean, to me it's so exciting, and maybe some of you are, are, would agree with me, it's so exciting, especially as we get into the chats on the WhatsApp and the, and the Zoom calls where we did talk to people all around the world who are excited about being equipped and being prepared as forerunners in this hour, knowing that there's something significant that God is doing in this day. Amen. It's exciting. It's exciting. And I want you to be excited about it. Amen. Amen. Get excited. I know it's 30 degrees in here, but get excited. Get excited. God has said, look, we can't look at what's going on in the world totally. We've got to look at what God is doing. And he's raising up powerful, powerful things right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I want to go, I want to still talk about this man-child for a minute. I want to go uh, to the book of Esther. Uh, I love the book of Esther. And, you know, we've taught it a, a lot over the years, mainly going back a few years. We taught uh, quite a bit about it. But it's such a beautiful picture of the bride of Christ and, you know, the, the man-child, really. Because the man-child, another way of defining it would be the man-child will be a family of mature sons for the Father, for the Heavenly Father, and a prepared bride for Christ. Uh, and so if you get look at Esther, you see kind of a panoramic view of the end-time bride. And I want to look at that because I want, us, I want us to understand what God is doing and what we need to be a part of and what we need to allow him to do in us and forerunners to do through us uh, into other people. But so if you look at the book of Esther, I, I mean, I'm not going to read all, obviously not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read a couple of verses in a minute. But, but if, you look at the, if you look at the book of Esther, you, you know, you, you got King Assyrius who is, somewhat of a representative of Christ, although obviously if you look at it in the natural, he's not anything like that. But in, in this picture he is. Vashti was his uh, bride who refused to be uh, submissive to his invitations. Esther becomes the bride who is the worthy bride, who is accepted uh, by the king. But then Esther, after she is prepared is used to defeat Haman and his evil plot. Now Haman is a picture of the whole Antichrist system. He had ten sons and uh, I won't go, try to go into all of that. But Haman is a picture of that Antichrist system that in fact is rising up in the day, today in the earth. And what God wants to do is raise up that Esther who has been born for such a time as this who will have the attitude, if I perish, I perish, to confront that. So what did Esther do? She was used of God to flip the gallows that Haman had made for the Jews. She flipped those, and Haman was actually uh, uh, hung on, uh, on the gallows that he had created to kill the Jews. In other words, she was a force to be reckoned with. Now, what does she have to do? She had to say yes to the preparation. Uh, she had to take. She had to go through six months of myrrh baths, myrrh being that uh, burial spice that's bitter to the taste and but a sweet aroma. Is going and essentially is going to the cross that she might become a sweet fragrance uh, to the king. Um, I've been really do, doing some study on. I'm studying it now because I'm a right a. Uh, a, a, a forerunner school class on the theology of the bride. And I've been studying f the fragrances of, of Esther. And uh, uh, I know you probably don't care, but anyway, it's really, it's, really, <laughs> it's really an interesting study because Esther w had that myrrh which created a fragrance and then she was uh, anointed with spices and cosmetics. 
Uh, and it's interesting, I went to the spices in the Song of Solomon. Uh, if you, it's an interesting study. You ought to look at it. Uh, where the king begins to tell the Shulamite maiden in Song of Solomon how you have such, um, you have these fragrances that just rise up to me that are beautiful. But it's interesting, he doesn't begin to comment about her fragrances until Song of Solomon chapter 4, verse 6, where she says, I will go until, until the cool of the day when the shadows flee away. I will go to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. In other words, she is saying, I will go to the cross. I will go to the cross until, uh, until all the shadows in my life, all the darkness in my life is, wa is washed away. I will go to the cross until that point in time. And when she makes that decision, he begins to say, you're a fragrance unto me. You know, Paul talked about that. He said, you know, we're a fragrance of death unto death unto God and life unto life unto the world. Death to the cross, you know, death to self, death to sin that produces that. And so the bride, the, the man child has to say yes to allowing God to do this deep, deep work in him or in us uh, to be made ready to allow the cross to have its way, to have the cross to work its way so that the shadows in our life, the shadows of our self-life flee away and so that Christ and him alone re remain. So that, so that this man-child, this birth from the womb of the church is a mature representation of Christ uh, in the earth. Now, going back again to Esther, then in a, after those 12 months of uh, of uh, preparation, she got to go into the king and she pleased the king in his chambers. And so that's another aspect of being this man child is to be, is to please the Lord in our intimate relationship with him. Uh, as we have that personal, secret, hidden relationship with him, pleasing him in that respect. But out of that, out of that, Esther became a force to be reckoned with. She said, if I perish, I'll perish, but I've been born for such a time as this. And she was used, and she was used to save the Jews. Now, that's what the man child is going to do. The man child, as it's prepared, will be that force that will stand and that will resist this uh, force that is coming upon the earth even now. They will, that's, this company will be used in great authority. Amen? Amen. 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 You're still awake? Yeah. Amen. Say, I'm awake, Ken. We are awake. We are awake. Okay. All right, but I, want to do, I do want to deal with one thing. Um, turn to Esther chapter 3, verse 1. You know, one of the things that, you know, all the stuff that's been going on uh, this week, it, uh, just, uh, so I was so... Uh, depressed, I guess would be the right word, when a Wednesday with all that happened and the, with the, the Congress being uh, attacked and overrun by the, uh, by the people there. Uh, it was a really, you know, just really discouraging in so many ways. And, you know, one of the things that I began to see that happened right after that is a lot of uh, pastors who were tweeting said this. I want, to I want to deal with this because I think what, they're, what they were saying is wrong. They, many of them were saying, okay, we've, we need to forget about politics. We need to forget about all this stuff and what we need to do is just preach Christ. Just totally focus on Christ and forget about all of that. I want to say no. That's not, that is not right. Now, now let me just show you this. And, uh, this is, we're talking about Esther. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. After these events, King Assyrius promoted Haman. Remember, that's a picture of the Antichrist system. 
and the son of all his people, and, he gave, and established his authority over all the princes who were with him. And the king's servants were at the king's gates, and they bowed down and they paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning them. In other words, he had made a, an edict, a law, a law that they had to be, uh, that Haman had to be uh, honored and uh, given homage. But Mordecai, who's a picture of the Holy Spirit, neither bowed down nor paid homage. He wouldn't bow down to the Antichrist system. He's a picture of the, of the Holy Spirit working in, the, uh, in, in and through the church. Then the, verse 3, Then the king's servants who were at the king's gates uh, said to Mordecai, Why are you transgressing the king's command? Now it was when they had spoken daily to him and he would not listen to them. Mordecai would listen to them. They told Haman to see where the Mordecai, uh, re, his reason would stand, for he told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai neither bowed down nor paid homage to him, Haman was filled with rage. But he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai only, but told him who the people of Mordecai were. Therefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews, the people of Mordecai, who were throughout the land. In other words, there were, there were edicts, there were laws that were initiated by the king that said, Mordecai, in other words, people of God, you've got to bow down to these false laws. But what did, I, what did Mordecai do? Mordecai said, no, I'm not going to bow down to them. I am, going to, I am going to stand against these laws that come against the things of God, that comes against what they are trying to do. Uh, and so how do laws get made? Okay, the answer is, how do they get made? Politics. And so we've got to get involved in this. We've got to get involved in this fight. Now, um, there's certain things we don't have to get involved in. I'm not saying it's a political thing, Republican versus Democrat here in America. I mean, to me, in a lot of ways, what's been exposed over the recent days, if they're just both two heads of the same stake. You know, so I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that we've got to stand against all these laws that are being pushed out, or pushing Christianity out of America. We can't just go into a cocoon and preach Christ and Him crucified. We need to do that, but we also need to stand against these things. Uh, and forerunners and the man child must do that. Amen. They must do that. We must stand against. See, the, the, this Antichrist system that is rising up in the earth, there are three prongs to it primarily right now or, that are being initiated. Economic, government, and religion. Uh, and, we've are, and we're already seeing all of those being, in some way, being attacked. Uh, I mean, right now, the First Amendment is under massive assault in America right now where they are banning free speech on almost all the social, major social platforms uh, in America right now. So it's happening, it's happening right now. But it's, it's the, the governmental system that is initiating these things. And forerunners and the bride, the man-child, we must stand strong to resist these things. We cannot... Just ignore them and let all of this go worse and worse and worse throughout the scripture. It's the, you see it in Revelation 12. You see the man-child confronting the dragon and to the point that the dragon is cast down to earth. You see it in Esther. You see it, uh, you see it throughout uh, the scriptures. Now, I'm not saying the whole world's going to be Christianized. I'm not saying the seven mountains of culture will be all Christianized. No, they're not. They're not going to be, but we, what we want America to be is we want America to be a sheep nation as it goes into the millennial kingdom and not a goat nation. And therefore, we've got to fight for that. We've got to fight for that, and part of the fight is against, is, is against the governmental systems that are coming against, into the earth. Amen. 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 Amen
like Terry Bennett would say, that's good preaching, whether you like it or not. Okay, all right. All right, so let's go back to the, uh, to the, to the word because there's some more important points in it. Uh, I sense that, the, that a holiness revival is going to fall on the hip church that will remove the compromise within the movement so that it does not lose the young people in the coming decade. Pray for the seeker type church that it might awaken for it is important so that young Christians living in compromise may come out unto holiness. Uh, we want to do that, but uh, I want myself to be in holiness too first. So we pray, Lord, start with us. Start with me. Make me holy as you are holy. A new day is dawning, much like the time when Jesus was born. Just like the angels said to the shepherds, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. We must embrace this, this same attitude, to have joy in the decade ahead. This is, this is a really important point for us. We must embrace this to have joy in the decade ahead. To have joy and fulfillment in the coming years, we must engage fully in his plan to birth the man-child. If we do this, listen to this now, if we do this, the decade will be very exciting and fulfilling. If we try to find our joy in worldly things, not bad things, but things of the world, we will be disappointed, depressed, and miserable. As we engage fully with the Lord in this, the Holy Spirit will draw us much closer to the person of Christ in intimacy and in union and great joy will emerge within our souls. This coming forth of the man-child should be a time of great joy for us. It should be, we should get, as we get involved in what all that means and making ourselves a part of that, company, enjoying our time with the Lord uh, and allowing him to have his way in us. And then also as forerunners to be used of God to prepare others, there will be a great joy. I believe the Lord has said that there will be a great joy that will be ours during this coming decade. Uh, but as, but if, we, if all we want to do is keep the... American way of the 50s and 60s and 70s, if that's what we want, we're going to miss the joy. It's going to be, it's going to be miserable. Uh, you know, who knows what all is going to happen? I, I don't know, but I'd, uh, it's off to a roaring start in 2021, all i got to say. Uh, and so... You know, it's not to say that we can't enjoy going on vacation. We can't enjoy a ball game or maybe even shopping. I can't imagine that. But if we can't enjoy those things. But if our life is built around, that's what I'm saying. If our life is built around the pleasure in, the, in worldly things, we're not going to be content. We're not going to be filled with joy in the days ahead. Our joy is going to progressively have to come more and more from the Lord and our relationship with him and the ministry that he allows us to do. If, we, if we'll make that decision, if, we'll, if we will choose to do that in this hour, then I believe this decade will be an exciting, an exciting time, an adventure like nothing we've ever been a part of yet. Amen? Amen. I think everybody wants to go to a Disney World. I mean, okay, say so, amen. <laughs> amen. We want, to, we want to do this, okay? We want to find our joy in the Lord. It's his great joy in the time in, in our relationship with the Lord. Okay, let me read on. I sense the Lord that's saying that he has a decade-long assignment for us to raise up the church as mighty warriors not just as lovers of the Lord. For restoration life, it is time for the fulfillment of Luke 180. And the child, John the Baptist, continued to grow and to become strong in spirit, and he lived in the deserts until the day of his public appearance 
to Israel. It is time for the public appearance of Restoration Life Forerunner School and Life School to Atlanta, the United States, and the world in a greater, greater way. So we, we've got an assignment in this. It's not just to prepare our own self as part of this man-child company. It's to be used of God to prepare others. Our assignment, Restoration Life and Life School, is to be used of the Lord to bring this about through teaching, outreach, and intercession. Uh, we might wonder how this would be. Uh, I sense the Lord saying, I'm going to wake up the church in 2021. Yes, shaking is coming, but my purpose is to wake up God's people for the assignment I have for them in the end times. Only a remnant will wake up, but the remnant will be significant and great. They will do great exploits in my name beginning in 2021, not in fullness, but the beginning of then. So God wants to use us in teaching, outreach, outreach, and intercession. I want to say this. The Lord spoke this to me yesterday afternoon. Because, you know, after Wednesday, I was like, did we accomplish anything with our all that prayer that we did. And here's what the, and I'm sure, I'm sure this was the voice of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you accomplished much, much more than you thought you did. Amen. He said, you know, you, your prayer for exposure, Amen. your prayer for justice, yes. your prayer for mercy, those prayers were heard in heaven. In fact, he said this. You know, you know, you know the golden incense bowls of Revelation chapter eight. That they need to be filled. He said, "You did more, Regar regardless of whatever happens with Trump in the election. You did more to fill the golden incense bowls than your church has done since its inception during that time period." So I want to say thank you for your faithfulness, you know. And I, and, but there, I don't know what needs to take place in this particular assignment going forth. Uh, you know, I, I don't really have insight. Maybe some others of you might can share with us. But there will be other assignments over this decade, intercessory assignments. And... We will be faithful to them as God leads. You will be faithful because you've already demonstrated your faithfulness. And so God is pleased with what we've done so far. But this, but we're going to have more of these. It, the topics may be totally different, but there will be times because that's part of being that force to be reckoned with. Most of the force to be reckoned with is either through raising up others who will be forerunners or... Uh, intercession, praying into all these things that are that are happening and will happen in the future. So I really believe, I wanted to share that because I really believe the Lord is very pleased with your faithfulness in this. Amen. 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 All right. I'm almost finished. I think I am anyway. Uh, seek me, seek me, seek me for a fresh strategy, strategy for the decade. I am not throwing away all that I've taught you, but I am building afresh upon it. If you will seek me for restoration life in life school and the forerunner school, I will show you the strategy for the days ahead. Uh, do not wait to seek me. Do not delay. It is of urgent importance to quickly get the fresh strategy. By March of 2021, you must have a beginning strategy in place for the plans that I want you to implement. Now, we've already started that with the life school to kind of get a fresh strategy for how to go forward. We're finishing up this cycle of pastors, and before we start anything new, we want to, we want to seek that. So I've created a kind of a planning team with key leaders and mentors in Africa, and Brian's involved in it and myself. And we're, what we're doing is seeking a, how can we incorporate life school and the forerunner school and the other things to create a, uh, a process that will birth this man-child in a much greater 
way. But anyway, there are other aspects of it here with the church, and we've already talked about it with the leadership team, and we'll be seeking that. But I think God has a, a strategy. Even going back to Terry's word when he was here back in October, uh, where he said that God was giving us like a new beginning as we moved into this new building. Uh, I totally agree with that word, and I believe what God is doing, it, what we'll do is he'll give us the strategy, uh, whatever that might be, to do that and, and to reach uh, you know, the, this community as well as what we've been doing um, around the world. You know, it's really been, the Forerunner School has been such a, a joy to me, just the, the, the excitement of believers really around the world, Europe and Asia and Canada and throughout different parts of America and how hungry they are. God's doing something. It may be small little pockets here and there, but he's doing something really powerful. And he's invited us to be a part of it. And so we want to say thank you to him for that. And we want to say, yes, I want to be involved in that. Uh, it's exciting days. Yes, it can be frightening, but I believe as we fully in, engage, fully embrace what God is saying, there's a shield of protection that will be around us in whatever might be coming. Um, so let's just get excited about what God's going to do uh, it would be easy to be discouraged with what we have seen in the last few weeks. But let's get excited because God is on the move. In the midst of this, God is on the move and he has invited us in his church, but he's invited us to have a significant role to play in what he's doing in this decade. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's stand up. I want to just pray for us and then uh, I'll turn it back over to Brian. Father, I, I say yes to this with excitement. And I pray that each and every one of us would say yes with enthusiasm and excitement. Yes. Amen. Father, I know that it's going it, to, I, I want to just pray this. I want you to really allow God to do this. Lord, I know that there are mindsets that need a change. Not that, they're, not that they are bad, but it's that, it's that mindset of the American lifestyle that we've all enjoyed that may be changing. And so, Father, I, I pray that you would break off any adherence to the, that mindset that would keep us from going into the new season that we might be used of you, Lord, that we might have find our joy in a greater, greater way in you. And Lord, one thing I want to pray, Lord, is I pray that there would be a fresh enjoyment of the person of Christ in every one of our lives, Lord. A f fresh enjoyment where the word becomes alive, where just your voice becomes clear, where there are encounters and things within in our relationship with you that bring such joy that the things of the world will grow strange, more and more strangely dim in light of your glory and of your grace. So Lord, we say yes to you and we ask for a, a work of your spirit to be powerful and long-lasting in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. Amen. All right, amen. Amen. Pastor, you turn it over to you. Awesome. That was an awesome word. Awesome, awesome word. Has it warmed up at all? At all? No? Yes? It has? So the heat is working? Oh. Huh? The heat is working, it just was not on. Amen. Let's okay, do a Jericho so march. Let's do a Jericho march. That'll huh? warm us up. Do a Jericho march. Okay, anyone want the <laughs> fire of God to come on and the thaw them out? But uh, awesome message. I, I just want to add in there, I, he had not shared with me about the word, about the incense and the prayers and intercessions and stuff like that. I, I just thank you. I mean, I, I, I just say the same thing. I mean, I, I've never seen 
a church rally around something quite like we had over the, you know, from November 3rd on, even before that. Um, just amazing to see so many people sacrifice their time and their energy and just to just pray with fervency. I mean, just everyone was carrying the burden of the Lord for our nation. That's awesome. I mean, I believe we were carrying the heart of God for America and the destiny God has in his heart for America. And, and just to know that, that our prayers, even though they didn't happen like we expected, though, there is a thing of, of storing up incense, and that happened. And, you know, we're, we're going to see a release of that incense. But, you know, just, just want to encourage us. Just innocent, I mean, uh, I think Leonard Ravenhill said, if you want to know how popular a church is, or you wanna, if you want to know how popular a church is, go to Sunday morning service. If you want to know how popular a pastor is, go to Sun or Wednesday night service. But if you want to know how popular God is, go to the prayer meeting. That's where you'll find where people where people really are after God. And, and just to see so many of us come to the prayer meetings night after night after night, just praying and crying out to God was such a blessing. So thank you so much. And so anyway, we'll just end there and we just say, God bless you. God bless you to everyone on Zoom. We love you. We miss you. We thank you. We're glad you're warm. But uh, everyone, be blessed and have an awesome day. Offering. We'll, offering. Huh? Offering.